That's pretty awesome, isn't it? This statue. It is a memorial to the US Navy. Right here in Jacksonville, Florida. That's the St. John's River. The city's built on either side of it. Beautiful town. Um, you know, when we started out on this long road trip, the wife and I, before we were going to start visiting the small towns, we wanted to see every big city. Well, we still got a few left, a handful that we haven't been to yet. Columbus, Ohio, uh, let's see, San Jose, California, Washington, D.C., to name a few, and Jacksonville, Florida is one of the ones that we hadn't been to yet. Well, in 2021, the city population was 955,000 people, close to a million. In fact, the city will probably hit a million within five to 10 years. But that said, uh, the true measure of a city is its metro. And uh, Jacksonville's metro is 1.6 million. 1,637,000. So, uh, city population, Jacksonville, is 12th largest in the United States. But in terms of its metro, it's 39th. Uh, city population, it's first in the state. Metro population, it's fourth. The biggest, of course, is the behemoth, that is Miami. Miami's metro is 6.1 million people and is the ninth largest in the country. Tampa St. Pete, a little over 3.2 million, uh, 18th largest in the country. Orlando's metro is just shy of 2.7 million, 23rd in the U.S. Beautiful town named after President Andrew Jackson. Now, let's take a look at some of the numbers. They look pretty good overall. Median age is 40. Gender breakdown, 51 female, 49 male. Race breakdown, 60% white, 20% black, 10% Hispanic, 4% Asian. The remaining 6% is mixed. So it is a pretty diverse city. Now it's uh, mid-April. Today is Saturday. Beautiful day. As it often is in Florida. Uh, let's say it's 75 degrees Fahrenheit. 24 Celsius. Very pleasant. Now, yeah, I'm on this side of the river. I can walk across on that bridge right there. So why don't I do that? But before I do, like I said, it's a beautiful day. Was able to get the drone in the air, so here's some footage of Jacksonville from the air.
John T. Alsup Jr. Bridge. It's cool. Uh, I just saw the drawbridge go up and down. I wanted to get some video of it, but I uh, couldn't get close enough. Anyway, as I head across it, I give you a look at what I am seeing. It is uh, beautiful. That looks like a fun way to spend a Saturday, doesn't it? <laughs> How about if I tell you some of the other numbers? Uh, we will start with incomes. Per capita income here is $37,500 a year. That's $721 a week. Median household income is $68,400. That is thirteen, a little over $1,300 a week. Both of those are right in line with the U.S. national average. Um, median home value here, or the median home value, is $280,600. The U.S. average is two eighty two. dollars so again, um, right in line with the U.S. average. Same with uh, poverty. Poverty is 12.2% here. U.S. average is 12.6. So Jacksonville is right there with the U.S. And its averages really uh, feels like an all-American city. But um, there is one number that's not as good here. Let me get down into the city and I'll tell you about that. Well, check it out. Right there in the middle of frame is where I started this video. I'm on the other side of the river now. Exploring a bit. Checking out this, quite frankly, I mean, beautiful city, beautiful downtown. But uh, we got to talk about crime. It's pretty high here. Overall crime is 3,600 incidents per 100,000 people. U.S. average is 2,300. So, a bit higher. Uh, violent crime is worse. Just under 700 per 100K. U.S. average is 388. Close to twice higher. Uh, property crime, 2,900 per 100,000 people. U.S. average is right at 2,000. So um, crime is a bit of an issue here. Every other number in this town is pretty awesome. As you walk around downtown, you can't help but see all the green, the parks, so many of them. Uh, I looked it up. Turns out Jacksonville has the largest urban park system in the United States. That's pretty incredible. Now there's a famous person from Jacksonville you have probably heard of. He's in the news all the time. Ron DeSantis, the current governor of the state of Florida. He was born here. Now let's talk about music and the impact Jacksonville has had on that. And I'm talking about good old-fashioned southern rock, mostly from the 70s and 80s. Stuff I grew up on. Maybe many of you as well. Southern rock. Leonard Skinner despite their huge hit, Sweet Home Alabama. Leonard Skinner is not from Alabama. They are from here. This is where they formed, right here in Jacksonville. So did 38 Special. So did Molly Hatchet. So did Blackfoot. You may not be aware of Blackfoot. I listened to them as a kid. They weren't quite as big, but I love that song, Train, Train. Anyway, all those bands are from right here. So is Limp Biscuit, even though they are not southern rock but yeah <laughs> if you were a child in the 70s and 80s you knew those bands this is the Florida theater built in 1927 an iconic building here in the city on a National Register as you can well imagine and it looks like it's in operation you think uh, we can go inside should we try? Nope, doors are locked. But we can look this way. How about if we look this way? Give you a look. It's 
beautiful, isn't it? Well, let's see what else I can find. Still looking around. There is a mural here. I'm not sure who that is, but they've got lights strung around him to illuminate, uh, illuminate him at night, it looks like. Hey there. Anybody know? know who that is? Yeah, who is it? A. Philip Randolph. Who? A. Philip Randolph. And who's he? He is, I think, one of the first black members in the union here in Florida, in Jacksonville. Okay, well, they've got him a nice mural here with lighting. I like yeah. that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you for that. That was a nice lady standing right there. <laughs> she answered the question. Look, there's another mural over here, too. I was wondering if Jacksonville had murals. I'm seeing a few. Now, I don't know what that is, either. Maybe someone can explain it. Now, one of the things I enjoy about wandering around downtowns is finding little treasures that I didn't, you know, find while researching. And here's one. This is the Bedell Building. Now, I was going to tell you this earlier, but the city of Jacksonville, at least its downtown, was destroyed in the early 1900s. 1901, I believe. Now, when they began rebuilding, this was one of the first buildings built. Completed in 1905, this was the Carnegie Library. Now, they've moved the library since, but uh, I believe it's set and empty now, but it is in the process of being restored. Neoclassical architecture, that's yeah, gorgeous. Now, here in the shadow of downtown's tallest buildings is this, the First Presbyterian Church. Uh, hopefully you can see it. It's sun is to the other side there, so it's kind of in the shade. Beautiful though. Built in 1902. The original was destroyed in the fire I told you about. And so, yeah, they had to rebuild it. Here it is. Absolutely gorgeous. Basilica of the Immaculate Conception. That sure is beautiful. Built in 1910, because like I said, uh, the fire burned everything down. I was reading about the fire just now. 2,400 buildings here in downtown Jacksonville were burned to the ground. That is crazy, isn't it? But here's a look, good look at this church. It's... Now this impressive structure is Jacksonville City Hall. Built in 1912. Uh, it is an example of prairie architecture on the National Register, no surprise there. Now you may be more familiar with uh, Frank Lloyd Wright's version of prairie architecture. It's how he designed his buildings for the most part with that style in mind. But you do see others and this is a perfect example of that. Uh, you know it's uh, about straight lines uh, roofs that are low or flat and just like it sounds it's designed to blend in with the prairie look at all that uh, intricate work uh, carvings up there in the top it's amazing uh, I'm right across the street or this uh, city hall is across the street from James Weldon Johnson Park and uh, yeah, somebody's having a photo shoot over here of some sort. That's why all the hollering you hear in the, in the background. But anyway, I'll give you a look here. Yeah, it's beautiful. I bet the kids love it here in the uh, summer when it gets really hot. Got a bunch of kids here now, but you can see some fountains over there I think that they can get into. Well, I'm in a part of downtown that's not quite as nice. A lot of homeless over here. Uh, I ran across this abandoned school. I'm going to give you a quick look at it. It's all chained up now. Uh, let's see what it says. James Weldon Johnson. Uh, I guess that's who this high school is named after. They got a placard over here. Let's see what it says. 
Let's see, Old Stanton High School. This magnificent building was built in 1917 after the Great Fire of 1901. Yeah, the fire I told you about. Earlier structure on the site, or it replaced that, named for Lincoln's Secretary of War, Edwin Stanton. All right, Edwin Stanton, uh, who was instrumental in creation of the Freedmen's Bureau. Wow. Stanton High School founded as a grade school for African Americans after the Civil War was expanded into the first public high school for blacks by its dynamic principal, James Weldon Johnson. Wow, after the school was destroyed, fought for the school to be replaced by this all brick structure. Probably a smart idea. Let's see. Uh, they built a new school and this one appears like it closed in 1953. So, that's a long time to be sitting empty, isn't it? Yeah, you hate to see that. All right. Well, in the shadow of this Wells Fargo building, which is very distinctive, you can't miss it, is a statue of Andrew Jackson. First governor of Florida under the United States flag, 1821. Of course, former president. His head is turned away from the sun. <laughs> I guess I'll swing around. Give you a look. Somebody told me the reason they put faces away from the sun on these statues is so they won't get washed out. But you can't see them. Anyway, here you go. Andrew Jackson, after whom Jacksonville was named. Right here in beautiful downtown. Now, a few thoughts on the city. It's quite beautiful. You can see it for yourself. Uh, as I wandered a couple of blocks, or several blocks out of the downtown area though, a lot of homeless. Really a lot. And uh, I guess that makes sense. If you're going to be homeless, this is the kind of place you want to be. It's a lot warmer. Uh, like I said, the city's pretty high, uh, pretty high crime rate. And you could feel it ever so slightly out there a few blocks out. But overall, I'm pretty impressed with the town. There's a homeless guy right there. Got a few downtown here as well. But anyway, Again, uh, pretty impressed with the city. It's beautiful. We are staying at the Embassy Suites while here in Jacksonville. Pretty nice hotel. This one's a little bit older. So it has that huge open area that the older Embassy, embassy Suites have that they don't put in the new ones. But anyway, uh, here, I'm going to give you a look at it. Now, Embassy Suites feel like your classic grand hotel. You know, we love Drury's and Hilton's Home Two Suites, but they feel like roadside uh, hotels. Uh, this feels like your, your big fancy hotel, if you will. And uh, like I said earlier, Embassy Suites always have the huge atriums, huge open areas. Anyway, uh, the wife and I will show you a few of the amenities of the place. Uh, let's do that right now. MC Suites always have really nice gyms. Uh, the wife is working out right now. There she is, don't say anything. Man, you're working it hard, honey. I'm scared. <laughs> you didn't know that was me? Huh? You didn't know that was me? I didn't hear you come in because this is so loud. Oh, you were working out hard when I first walked in. Well, I'm trying to use these and I keep slipping off my legs because... They what? Keep slipping off your legs? Yeah, I just need a heavier weight. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, so uh, <laughs> anyway, here's the gym. It's pretty nice. scared the crap out of me, though. Scared the crap out of you. <laughs> I thought you knew that was me coming in. I didn't hear anything. We're on the top floor, the seventh floor, which is just okay. 
a little bit of a trip to get our luggage up here, but how about if I show you the room? Give you a quick look at it. All right. Now it's a uh, suite. Well, are you going to focus camera? Let's wait for the camera to focus. Now that the camera has focused, I can show you the room. Uh, we've got a little couch here with a TV. Uh, the little couch, of course, pulls out into a bed if you need it to, which we don't. A desk where you can eat and have dinner, etc., or, like me, uh, work on videos. A little kitchen area with a sink. And bathroom, a small bathroom. Let's see if we can turn the light on. There we go. Yeah, a little small bathroom with a shower. Um, and then a bedroom right here. And the bedroom has a TV itself with a closet. And not a great view, but oh well. Yeah. There's Jacksonville. We are at the indoor pool and hot tub at the hotel. Yeah, what do you think? Uh, I like the hot tub. It's nice. It's nice Is it? Water. Yeah, it feels really warm, doesn't it? Hot water and a hot tub. What? A well, hot, nice hot hot tub. Hot tub. Yeah, it is hot. It's rather hot. Anyway, we're gonna hang out here, have some uh, drinks, relax. This is uh, our favorite part of staying in hotels. Yes, it is. Hanging out in a hot tub and having a drink. Isn't that right? <laughs> so it's always nice when a hotel actually has a hot tub that works. That works. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. One of the things included in your stays at Embassy Suites is breakfast. And they're usually really good, so I'm going to go check it out. All right, well, as I sit here in the atrium, here's the breakfast. Now, they've got a person at a breakfast bar continually making fresh eggs and fresh pancakes. You can get omelets, too. And there's sausage, but I got bacon and potatoes. Some fresh fruit. And orange juice. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Let's see how it tastes. Well, the verdict is everything tastes really good and fresh made. Fresh made makes all the difference. So, uh, yeah, this is one of the things Embassy Suites does best, is making fresh breakfast. And, uh, you know, when you stay here, you get a fresh breakfast every morning, and it's included. All right, we are going to have dinner at the bar restaurant at the uh, at the hotel they have an on-site full bar and a kitchen here so ready to eat we are sitting in the bar now watching Jurassic Park <laughs> the first one from like what like 93 I think I 95 or 96 yes no, the very first one was like 93 oh was it well when it came out it was the biggest box office movie in history of course not anymore but we've got Jack Daniels now Yes, we did. And we've ordered our food. Yes, we did. And it'll be here shortly. I've got salmon. I know I've never tried it before. <laughs> mm -hmm. Black and salmon. Hmm. Black and salmon. That's I've never new for you. had it before. All right, our food is here. I'm having braised short ribs, and you are having blackened salmon black with salmon. rice. And I got this nice salad because I didn't want spinach, but it was salad. Yeah, the salad. Great. Yeah. The salad, the salad looks, looks good. Yeah, it looks very good. All right. Yep. We're gonna dig in. Well, the food's pretty good, but. Short ribs are basically just fancy pot roast, <laughs> and it's supposed to have carrots and onions in there. There aren't any. And I checked the menu. Uh, the menu says there's supposed to be carrots and onions in there. It definitely needs carrots and onions. Uh, neither one. It's just mashed potatoes and the meat. It all tastes good, but it is missing those vegetables. My salad's good. good. My salmon's, my salmon's okay. That's boring. The rice is not very good. The rice is boring. Yeah. But I mean, I'm still going to fill up on it. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's hotel food. Yeah, Why do we exactly. Expect? exactly. It's pretty good, but not great. Pretty good, yeah. Not pretty good, not great. No. <laughs> All right, everyone. That's the end of this video. We are uh, we're heading up into Tennessee next. Yay. So be looking for that. <laughs>